critique of some of those who call themselves Pan-Africans and just got their whole lesson, history, uh, history and um, current affairs incorrect. Now, uh, we're going to start off with um, a vid of Uhuru movement speaking about the 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 so-called uh well i'm not going to tell you you're going to hear it for yourself how about that and then we show you the result of it and you tell me if this makes sense here we go uhuru movement gives update on fire set by a flamethrower to their flag in front of their uh building an assailant came into the parking lot of the Uhura house at 9.51 on Saturday okay, where's the audio and proceeded to use a flamethrower to where destroy this African flag. Uh, this kind of brazen okay, uh, white that? nationalist attempt to me, intimidate the that. African community uh, will yeah. not work. Uh, we will still continue to fight against colonialism because that's what this is, a cap colonial capitalist attack right. from what we are soon to be a civilian let me start this over an assailant came into the parking lot of the uhura house at 9 51 on saturday and proceeded to use a flamethrower to destroy this african flag uh this kind of brazen uh white nationalist attempt to intimidate the african community uh will not work uh, we will still continue to fight against colonialism because that's what this is, a cap colonial capitalist attack uh, from what we are soon to be a civilian. Uh, however, uh, many groups out there in the world are now connected to the state in a way as, as extraordinary extensions of the colonial state to carry out violence against African people. So. We're very happy today to be able to have some outstanding speakers who will speak on this issue. Uh, first, we will have Director Akile Anai, who is the Director of Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. She will be speaking first. And then we will have Jamie Simpson, who is a member of the Uhura Solidarity Committee a white organization that organizes behind enemy lines in the white community under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. And then we will have Dexter M. Wingo, who is the International People's Democratic Who Movement St. Petersburg organizer. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Director Akile Anai of the African People's Socialist Party. She's the Director of Agitation and Propaganda. Okay, now if you notice, this is, you know, as they announced her, Akila, um, she's one of the main organizers for the Uhuru movement, and she's been pretty prominent in that organization as of late. She's one of the people that sat down with the Russian spy um, agent, government agent, who the FBI has, uh, has, file charges against, right? And um, for spreading disinformation, um, conspiring to affect elections and beyond. So here we go. Uhuru, as mentioned, my name is Akile Anai, and I'm the director of the Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. We are having this press conference on today, July 4th which represents what's characterized as Independence Day for the colonizer population, which formally established the U.S. as a separate settler colonialist state on stolen land of the indigenous people using the stolen enslaved labor of Africans brought here in chains. Now, <clears throat> as I pointed out to you <clears throat> in the last couple videos, right, on this organ about this organization, right? Now, they're speaking about stolen lands, colonialism, and what have you, right? And uh, that sounds pretty familiar to us uh, as Pan-Africans, as African-Americans, as Native Americans, 
as uh, indigenous people, uh, right? <clears throat> but as I pointed out, they're sitting down. They already sat down with a Russian spy, received uh, monies, presumably, right? She wouldn't answer that question, but it pretty much sounds like she wasn't denying it. She just didn't want to speak on it and say yes, right? Now, um, that we're going to find out all the facts later. But uh, in any case, this same Russian spy, as we pointed out before, was also uh, giving logistics, logistics support to right-wingers, right, in the U.S. And we know that. This is not a new conversation. Um, the Russians have been promoting... Uh, the Russian government has been promoting things like MAGA and all types of confusion in the country, right? And um, so the big thing about it is, is that they don't document Russians, Russia's uh, colonial history. They don't know about Russians' colonial history in America, um, where they also killed Native Americans and plotted against the indigenous people. They don't even acknowledge CARICOM's uh, database where they firmly said that Russians were participants in the transatlantic slave trade. So let's go back and see and, and, and take it from there. See what she has to say. Oops, here we go. Oh, where is this one at? Is it here? Here we go, right. This point bears significance because of the nature of the attack that our party came under on Saturday, July 2nd, where an unknown individual came into the parking lot of our Uhuru house and proceeded to burn our towering red, black, and green African national flag with a military-grade flamethrower. The basis of this attack is clear. The RBG flag is a clear response to the red, white, and blue that has come to represent the settler colony known as the United States of America. It's a response from African workers domestically colonized within U.S. borders that we constitute our own colonially dispersed African nation, which is in the process of cons consolidating itself, bringing about an existential threat to the U.S. and all other colonial powers of the world who benefit from the separation of African people to maintain the colonial mode of production. This social system, born of slavery and colonialism, birthed a capitalist economic configuration of the world, defined as the colonial mode of production by Chairman Omali Ishitela, the leader and founder of the party and Uhuru movement. This mode of production is in a state of disrepair. The power of the U.S. is being challenged by Russia, China, and increasingly the anti-colonial struggles heating up throughout the so-called Americas in Africa and elsewhere. Okay, so now if we go back, let's just go over here to Carrie Combs' list again, just to remind people that weren't here before. Okay, let's see here. Carrie Com expands its list of countries to be targeted for reparations. And let's get right down to the part where they say who? Russia included. According to the new data, Russia came in for special attention with the records showing an 1838 voyage by the vessel Golubchik flying the Russian flag, departing from the port of Odessa and landing in Matanzas, Cuba. That same year, with a cargo of 306 of the 340 Africans who started the voyage. But Alexa Sezonov, head of the counselor section of the Russian embassy in Jamaica, so this is a Russian official, Russian government representative, rose to the defense of his country and in a statement questioned the completeness of the research and suggested that the vessel flying a country's flag did not necessarily imply that the vessel actually originated in that country. But Professor Shepard said that as the database becomes more widely known, countries implicated will be engaged in denial 
and cautioned against too quick of a denial as the Slave Voyages database is an active research project. She said the findings not only strengthens the case for CARICOM, the CARICOM is building against involved and complicit, complicit states, but also holds them accountable in making them aware of their responsibility in ways they would never before have confronted. The new findings also enhance the CARICOM Reparations Commission's work in carrying out the mandate given to them in 2013 by CARICOM governments. And that's 22 governments plus, right? Now, this, this article is June 12th, 2019. So this is four years ago. Now, not only have they never mentioned or discussed this, but, but at the same time, they claim that they're fighting for reparations, or at least they're screaming reparations, reparations, reparations. That's what they're doing. And the question is, what actual work are they really doing on the nuts and bolts dialogue and communications with the governments on reparations? Right. And why don't they acknowledge this? Now, we also pointed out very simply for people that don't seem to understand the history. Russia has been involved in the apartheid uh, in apartheid. They supported anybody can find this out. They supported the apartheid government. They gave the apartheid government weapons and they even sent medical supplies and medical doctors and nurses to South Africa to actually aid the, the, the police getting beat up when the, to aid the military when people were, when the African people were fighting against the apartheid government. And like all governments, all of them, most, once they saw the Africans getting a, getting a, a slight looking like they might actually do it, they flip sides. Now, and that's what many of the governments did. The same governments that they're pointing out, Russia basically did the same. Now, so let's go back to, uh, oh, not only that, we got, we got uh, Sagalo, Russia, 1883, inside of Somalia, trying to set up shop. But not only that, let's take it back a little further. Let's go here. Russian Russian colonization of America. Boom. Russian colonization of North America. It started in 1732 and it lasted till 1867. That is over a hundred something years in the Americas. What were they doing? The Battle of Sitka played a pivotal role in the history of the Tingit people and the formation of Russian Alaska. The site of the battle now forms Sitka National Historic Park, the oldest national park in Alaska. Now, they don't, for some reason, they, this organization, does not acknowledge the Russian presence in colonial America. Now, here's the thing. Not only that, not only that, but, um, oh my goodness, this is just getting too ridiculous. But they just seem to see everything Russian as good. And, and constantly point out every other colonial nation. Now, why, why give a pass to one colonizer? Why give a pass? See, that's the thing. If you're going to give a pass, explain your position on giving that pass. Because the rest of us historians don't understand it. The rest of us Pan-Africans don't understand it. And a whole lot of other people just don't seem to understand it because that doesn't fall in line with the actual history. It doesn't even fall in line with the official 
Russian documentation of their own history. So here we go. Let's go. Let's get back into this. The time is up for the global reign of the U.S. empire, and it knows this. In fact, anyone ardently celebrating this colonial holiday is in a state of denial or sheer panic over the uncertainty of the future for U.S. imperialism. State of denial? See, this, again, is a lot of projection because it's very clear somebody's in denial about the Russian colonial presence in America and that over 100 year history. Not only did the Russians have a footprint in the Americas being colonizers, killing and exterminating native people. Now, if you ask those people who, colon, who, who a colonizer is, they would gladly say, now, why don't she acknowledge those people? But here's the thing, Russia wasn't just there doing some exterminating, right? They also were mediators between other colonizing nations on how to split up the territories. You see? So, here we go. Let's go. Oh, and the denial. <laughs> the denial of this organization is about to get deep. Watch. This fear, this roiling anxiety among the colonizer population manifests itself in the type of white nationalist violence we witnessed in Buffalo, New York, with the killing of 10 black people in a supermarket. Do black people count? Do black people count? Okay, because that same Russian agent that you were so happy to sit down with and receive allegedly logistical support and funding was supporting right-wing extremists that are killing black people in America with this rhetoric. Let's go. It's also the basis for the type of assault we've come under with the burning of our flag. And we're clear this was a targeted, ideologically informed attack. Our party, which was founded in 1972 by Chairman Amalia Shetela, is recognized as the political leadership of the black community with the explicit goal for black power and self-determination. Okay, black power again. I mean, that's interesting because, you know, they keep saying, making these, uh, sending these projectiles out that are emotionally charged, right? For some reason, we're supposed to identify with that. Uh, plenty of people identify with these things, but that doesn't mean we break them down exactly how you do, right? Or agree with you and how you utilize that concept. Our mission is to seize power over our own lives and the means of production in our own interest. Doesn't that Russian spy supporting MAGA people and supporting white right-wingers in the country, doesn't that harm that with the disinformation they're using that's getting others to act against our people? Doesn't that work? I mean, she doesn't think that has any effect on anything? All right. No one else has taken on this task in this city or elsewhere. No one else has taken on this task in this city or elsewhere. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? There's hundreds and hundreds of organizations. And here's the thing. They're doing all kinds of work just because they don't necessarily agree with what you're saying and what your concepts cause people to do, the effect of what you're saying, that doesn't mean they don't exist. Maybe they don't exist for you because you don't acknowledge them. You don't acknowledge colonialism in America, according to who actually really colonized America. You don't acknowledge the transatlantic slave trade, according to who was actually involved. You don't acknowledge who helped support the apartheid government in killing African people in South Africa. You don't. 
Okay. Since the military defeat of the Black Power movement of the 1960s, no one in this city was, has managed to do what our party has, despite the countless attempts from the state to roadblock our work and discredit us in our own community. Right. I mean, what other black organization that exists is caught on tape sitting down with a Russian agent who supports right-wing extremists that kill black people? You're very unique. Our Uhuru House has been a longtime community center for meetings, events, office space for our organizers, and is home to our other economic development institutions such as the Uhuru Jiko Commercial Kitchen, Uhuru Pies, and within the last five years, Black Power 96 Radio. It is connected to a list of over 50 economic institutions produced by our movement throughout the world. Attacking this building has... 50 economic institutions? So what do you need funding from a Russian agent for, allegedly? ...has been a strategy of this system. In 1996, our building came under military assault from the St. Pete City government and its police. Following the murder of 18-year-old Tyron Lewis, they used every ounce of tear gas in this city, attempting to set this building on fire, attempting to assassinate our leaders by trapping them and members of our movement and members of this community while we conducted our regular community meeting. The community came out in droves and defeated the police, causing them to withdraw from the struggle. Defeated? Defeated. Our connection to this community was clear on Saturday when someone tried to prevent the arsonist from escaping the parking lot or when people... Now you hear, so they already have talked to a witness that tried to prevent the arsonist, right? So, okay, okay, that's good information, let's go. People learned of what occurred and came here to check on the well-being of the leadership. This building has the security of this community, which is what this individual or organization responsible for this attack did not anticipate. The police have told the media without notifying us that the person responsible is an African. That still remains unclear to us, whether or not this means they've been able to put a name and face together. This, this would be anyone's assumption, but this is not the case. If so, they are withholding that information. They also stated they can't consider this case of our, consider this a case of arson and have reduced it to criminal mischief. This should show clearly the state's complicity in this assault. I want to state clearly that regardless of who is responsible, the nationality of who is responsible, the crisis of this social system is felt by both the colonizer and colonized populations. I mentioned Buffalo, New York as one example, and I can also reference Uvalde, Texas, where the gunman was a colonized Mexican. The colonized population has always been weaponized against our own community, consciously or unconsciously. So this does not change the nature of this attack or the basis of it. The fact is anyone who identifies their future with the fate of U.S. imperialism is suffering the greatest anxiety attack in history. We're calling on our community to reject the future of this dying social system and embrace that which comes with black people capturing power over our own lives. We also call on the community, paraphrasing Mao Zedong, to rejoice when our enemies attack you. It is a to rejoice. Oh, okay. statement of the success of our party and movement who is bringing this social system to its knees. We are winning. Uhuru. Thank you, Director Akile. So we want to bring up Jamie Simpson from the Uhuru Solidarity Movement to make a statement. Uhuru. Thank you, Director Chimarenga. My name is Jamie Simpson. I am the St. Petersburg Chair of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. And on behalf of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, I want to say we are appalled by this cowardly act of colonial terror. And uh, we stand in absolute solid. Colonial terror. Colonial terror. Okay. So this person does colonial terror you acknowledge that as colonial terror right but this 
You don't acknowledge this colonial terror. You don't acknowledge that. You don't acknowledge Let's see here. Here we go. They don't acknowledge, despite the widely reported Soviet support for the ANC and otherwise liberation movements, the Soviet Union also engaged in some trade with the South Africa with South Africa during the apartheid era, mostly involving arms and some mineral resources. But here's the thing. If you really want to research it, you're going to find out it's not only that, it's medical supplies. They actually sent nurses, things like this, there. I mean, they were literally there, a part of it. You see? Backing it up. You see? But they don't acknowledge that, though. Okay, okay, but they acknowledge what, what you're about to see and hear. Check this out. Solidarity and defense of the Uhuru House, the Uhuru Movement, and the African People's Socialist Party. And I, I'd just like to also say that we recognize, as Director Akile just stated, that somebody didn't come to this building with a military-grade flamethrower and uh, torch this flag because... Uh, colonialism is strong and the African People's Socialist Party and the African Revolution is weak. Quite the contrary. They carried out this cowardly act of terror because they recognize colonialism is weak, is on weaker ground than ever, and the African Revolution is stronger than ever. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement is... Right. But they don't recognize Russia... Here we go. Colonial Russia. I mean, who, who's Russian imperialism? I mean, who is arguing this don't exist? Look at this. Who's who's arguing this? Who's arguing this never it happened? Who's arguing this? Nobody's arguing this never happened. But for some reason, they keep hopping right past it just like they hopped past this okay okay i mean it's getting it's getting kind of confusing but okay it's an organization of mostly white people that was created 46 years ago by the african people's socialist party and its chairman omalia shatella whom we uh, salute for leading the african revolution for over 50 years and for coming up with the brilliant strategy of the solidarity movement, which shatters the I mean, they act like Africans don't exist. The, these are the leaders of the African movement. It's, hold on, let me just rewind this. Because some people say stuff, they self-aggrandize and at the same time eliminate all other work that's being done. And I'm just curious, do they actually work on the nuts and bolts of the reparations dialogue? The details that's happening in the dialogue with the government? Do they? Or any other government? Hmm. I wonder how those conversations got to happen. I wonder who's working on those things. I wonder what they think about this. With a military-grade flamethrower and uh, torch this flag because uh, colonialism is strong and the African People's Socialist Party and the African Revolution is weak. Quite the contrary. They care. Are they reading from a script? Didn't she just say that? She just said that. That it's, it's like colonialism, colonialism, colonialism. We strong. We're not weak. We strong. Well, how can you be strong when you don't have your facts correct? I mean, that might be a problem carried out this cowardly act of terror because they recognize colonial if you're strong why do you have to meet with a russian agent and get resource or allegedly resources and logistics the same russian agent that is funding right-wing extremists that are 
harming, scaring, terrorizing people. Black people, Mexicans, Natives, Arabs, Muslims, Pakistani, uh, Sikhs, uh, Chinese in America, in, in America, Japanese in America. I mean, what, what is this about? Colonialism is weak, is on weaker ground than ever, and the African Revolution is stronger than ever. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement is an organization of mostly white people that was created 46 years ago by the African People's Socialist Party and its chairman, Omalia Shetela, whom we uh, salute for leading the African Revolution for over 50 years and for coming up with the brilliant strategy of the Solidarity Movement, which shatters the white community's unity with its own ruling class by calling on us in the white community to unite with the revolutionary leadership of the African working class to struggle for reparations and a, a revolution that is a revolutionary demand reparations that represents the only legitimate thing that this system can do to take a step toward justice for African people. And it is the basis of our unity with the African community, as well as the only way that we can reclaim our humanity. We call on the white community to abandon our traditional role as colonizers. As <laughs> but did you ask anything of Russia? Did you? I mean, it's, we're just talking about fairness. Fairness is something, a term that strikes deeper. It strikes deep into every other concept you could want to have. You must have fairness in it. Let's go. As the lynch mob and as various types of agents of our own ruling class. Agents of our own ruling class. They just sat down and talked with an agent of the Russian government who's doing what? Attempting to make Ukraine subservient, sharecropping people for the upper class of Russia? Come on. What, it, it, it just, oh. Who have historically, enthusiastically carried out that ruling class's bidding and uh, the, the most... Sound like they're talking about what's going on, the uh, Russia invasion of Ukraine. When you talk about historically, historically, what, where is this at? Historically, let me open this up. Map showing the expansion of Russia from 1300s to 1945. That ain't history? Okay, okay, okay. I mean, you know, once again, let's go back to the word she used. Delusional. She used that word. Okay, let's, let's keep it going. Heinous acts of colonial violence and terror against African people to protect our own positions in this colonial system. We call on the white community. We call on you to support reparations and liberation for African people. Why didn't you call on the Russian agents to stop supporting white extremism or right wing extremism? Why not? I mean, where's that call at? Where's that call? So, anyway, let's go. And to recognize the significance of this organization. Recognize. They use the word recognize. Recognize? Recognize? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. Soviet Union also engaged in some trade with South Africa during the apartheid era, mostly involving arms and some mineral. They don't recognize it. Russian colonization of North America, they don't recognize it. CARICOM expands list of nations for reparations, Russia included. They don't recognize Now, and here's the interesting thing. They're talking about data vanguard. CARICOM is, they got a mandate from 22 countries and the citizens of those countries. Where do they think those people live? 
I mean, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Recognize the significance of the African international flag that was attacked this weekend. Recognize the significance of the Uhuru movement, the African People's Socialist Party, as the organization that is leading. Do they even know what socialism is? I mean, do, do they think they're the only people on earth that ever heard of the term? Or, or even, or even are proud of the term? Do they recognize that? Half, half, every time they say Western imperialists, most of them are socialist, a socialist democratic or socialist countries with maybe a third part of their uh, economy based in capitalism. They're talking about nations that pay students to go to school where everyone ha gets medical care, free health care by the government. I mean, where, where everyone gets housing assistance, they're calling these people Western imperialists. Okay, hmm. They need to come and take a look around. Leading the way out of this colonial nightmare and toward a future of genuine freedom and social justice that can be and should be our own future if we are willing to accept our responsibility to struggle against this system of violence and oppression and to help build unity through reparations. So July 4th is allegedly Independence Day in the United States. Uh, but what this holiday really celebrates is a colonial mode of production that is based on slavery and genocide. Okay, slavery. We got some slavery right here. We got some slavery. See, see how these nations are. See, they're not just picking on Russia here, Carrie Count. They don't, they don't, they don't care who you are when you participated in it. They don't care if you call yourself uh, anything. They don't care if you call yourself socialist. If you did it, you did it. Do they recognize this? Do they recognize Russia uh, supported the apartheid government? Do they recognize Russia colonized North America? Do they? Do they? <laughs> do they recognize this? from the expansion, Russian expansion from 1300 until 1945. 1945? That's, anyway, okay, okay, let's see here. And that colonial mode of production as Chairman Omali Ishitala defines it, that system is in profound crisis. You know, the sick part about this is that Russia is the biggest geographical country on earth how do they think they got that big they, they just so much so that someone came to this building torched this beautiful african flag that flies above this community community providing a real sense of pride and hope for the, the people here and did so in a, a desperate and depraved attempt to defend colonial capitalism and to try and terrorize African people out of building a new world of self-determination, but they failed. No one can stop the African working class from organizing in their own interests to free themselves. As Director Akile said, there is great- You're right. And there's a lot of us. However, your methodologies and your foolishness, we all don't agree with. That's the difference. We will win, but, uh, hmm. Great anxiety and an existential crisis in this system and in the gen general white population, that anxiety is in response to the growing resistance of African and other colonized peoples throughout the world. But that anxiety does not have to be ours if we stop identifying- Other colonized people throughout the world. Hmm. Hmm. Other colonized people throughout the world. Okay, 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 okay. Identifying with this oppressive and parasitic system and embrace instead the optimism of the African Revolution as our own. This uh, crisis of imperialism, this anxiety of this system manifests its... 
Crisis of Imperialism. Russian Imperialism. Okay, I mean, they use those terms, but they kind of use them myopically. Uh, it's not really necessary if you want to get rid of it. Self in the colonizer population, that's us in the white community, or it's expected to be us. It, it also expresses. No, 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 no. See, in your community, the colonizer, uh, <laughs> I mean, it just gets mangled. It just gets mangled. It just, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna skip this part. I keep going. This is keep itself going. in the colonized population, but it always comes as a consequence of identifying with a colonial system that is doomed. And by refusing to embrace the future of genuine revolution and freedom offered by the African Revolution. So the city of St. Petersburg. Uh, see, now, this is the thing about it. How do African people feel when they see this man saying this? This is just our own. This uh, crisis of imperialism, this anxiety of this system it manifests itself in the colonizer population. That's us in the white community, or it's expected to be us. It also expresses itself in the colonized population, but it always comes as a consequence of identifying with a colonial system that is doomed. And by refusing to embrace the future of genuine revolution and freedom offered by the African Revolution. Yeah. So the city of St. Petersburg loves to tout itself as a progressive city. But the fact that someone can brazenly, in broad daylight, attack the only institution that represents the African working class's real interests exposes this progressive city narrative. See, you know, this is the crazy thing. The flag to them means more than all the people, all the black people, all the Hispanic people, all the Asian people, all the native people that have come under attack by MAGA through support and collusion with the Russian disinformation and their 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 their, their, their plan, their execution. You see, it's it's an attack. They don't recognize that though. All those lives don't matter as long as Russia. Does. Russia can come and 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 create as much disinformation that results, or, and not just disinformation, they can support and back political leaders that result in hate and death. They can do that, but these people don't recognize it. ...narrative for the lie that it is, and this lie is further exposed by the fact that the St. Pete Police Department, the city of St. Petersburg, has refused to call this act what it was, an act of arson and of terrorism, and to call it this criminal mischief slap on the wrist is a sign of the complicity of this city. But we don't expect this system to offer justice for African people or protect the African community when the uh, purpose of this colonial system of, of police in this country is to subjugate, oppress African people. But the reality- You know, see this is, oh my God, when the purpose- This act what it was an act of arson and of terrorism, and to call it this criminal mischief slap on the wrist is a sign of the complicity of this city, but we don't expect this system to offer justice for African people or protect the African community when the uh, purpose of this colonial system of, of police in this country is to subjugate, oppress African people. So you can't have it both ways. You're saying the system and the purpose of the police is to do this. So what are you asking for? You're asking, you're expecting the police to do something, and then you're disappointed that they don't, and then you say you never expected them to because their purpose is not to. I mean, wh what's going on here? But the reality is African people are done being victims of this system. African people represent the future of this world, and we call on white people in this city and throughout the world to stand by the Uhuru movement, stand by the Uhuru house, 
defend this building, this institution, and everything it represents, support an end to gentrification in this city and throughout the world, support an end to police murders, oppose colonial acts of terror against the African community, and support reparations to African people. If you hear this message, if you're a white person who unites with the black community, I call on you to join the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. But again, are they working on the nuts and bolts of the reparations, <laughs> of reparations with the actual government? I mean, they do realize the same government that they're saying they don't expect to do anything because they were made to oppress is the same government that's discussing reparations. I mean, and are they a part of that discussion? Are they a part of the, the work, the research? You know, to get reparations, you can't just come up and say, I want reparations. You actually have to come with the entire package, which people are working on. What's up with that? What? It, it, it makes no sense. They don't acknowledge other organizations, other people that are actually working on it. Come out to our event that is calling on the white community to defend this movement and support reparations. That's on Saturday, July 23rd at 4 p.m. at the Body Electric Yoga in St. Petersburg. For more information, you can contact us at Pete at uhurusolidarity.org. Thank you very much. Mm. Wow, all right. Thank you, Jamie. All righty. Don't know what the hell just happened there. Okay, hold on. Here we go. I don't know why it stopped. Uhuru, I want to preach that, Director Timaranga. And uh, I want to really appreciate the statements made by, uh, by Comrade Jamie Simpson, Simpson and uh, Director Akile Anai. Um, as was mentioned, my name is Dexter Mlemwingu. I am the, uh, the local chair of the African People's Socialist Party, as well as an organizer with the uh, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. And uh, the first thing I really wanted to do today was uh, salute the African community. Uh, I want to salute the members of the African community who have supported the Uhuru Movement and these institutions in, in the wake of what could only be called a colonial attack. In the immediate wake of Everything with them is a colonial attack. If you throw a peanut at the building, it's a colonial attack. You know? The attack, uh, when Black Power 96 station manager... Eddie when, when you see... <laughs> oh, man. We, we're going to get to the end of this. It's coming. The, the, uh, <laughs> the kicker is coming. He mostly was sitting right here in the front row. When he made the announcement over the radio, we had African people, uh, one after the other, coming to the Uhuru House, making sure that the leadership of the African working class community was safe, making sure that these institutions uh, uh, were intact. And uh, I know we had, as was mentioned before, we had somebody in particular who we saw this attack happen and saw them falling right in front of them, saw this big flamethrower being used. They have somebody that saw it. They keep saying that, right? Okay. He tossed his flag and with no, absolutely no regard uh, to his own safety, he threw himself in between, uh, in the line of fire, threw himself between this attacker and his route of escape. And I really wanted us to commend the African community to support uh, we, we've had in the wake of this whole thing. Because uh, that, that really, it really represented the, uh, the willingness of the African working class community to fight for these institutions that serve the community and just defend them tooth and nail. Uh, and you know, this isn't the first time that uh, we've demonstrated this ability to defend our own institutions, to defend this movement. I uh, think was touched on before, but uh, in October 1996, when the police had decided to destroy this place, it was the African community who pushed them back. It wasn't one person, it wasn't two people, but it was an organized African community that mounted a defense that was so powerful, it, it, it pushed back every, every cop, every gun they had, every helicopter they had at their disposal, every tank, it sent them all back running with their tail between their legs. And that's a real uh, testament to the power that comes with an organized uh, African community. You know, we are really our own defenders. So we can't, you know, we can't look uh, to the police to defend the African community. You know, as we said before, they look at a high grade, a high grade military flamethrower being used to torch this place down, and they won't even call it arson. They call it a criminal mischief, like we're talking about uh, graffiti or, or someone jaywalking or something like that. You know, so we got to understand that the, uh, the ultimate defense of the African community 
the only genuine, true defense of the African community will be the African community. You know, we're our own defenders, but we gotta get organized. We gotta defend our people, we gotta defend these institutions that serve the people, and we gotta understand that an organized African community will, will make it impossible for anybody, for any foreigner, any, any intruder, to come into this community with high-grade weaponry and, and, and wreak any kind of havoc, wreak any kind of destruction in our community. But the only way we'll be able to do that is if we get organized. So I really want to call on everyone to join and support the Ahura movement and be part of mounting this defense of the African community. I also want to call on everyone to attend our upcoming community meeting. It'll be right here, July 9th, 2022 at 4 p.m. We'll be discussing the way forward uh, around this matter. We'll be discussing this forward more as well as damn it's uh, empty as hell currently impacting the African community. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that and say okay. again that we are our own defenders and we have to get organized. Uh -huh. Appreciate that. Chair Dexter. So <clears throat> I just want to make it clear that uh, in the context of what these speakers have said, particularly Director Akile, uh, we are carrying out our own investigation from the African People's Socialist Party. Uh, and I suspect that's the only real investigation that's... Uh, what, what, what investigation they're going to carry out when they don't acknowledge stuff? I mean, what investigation they're going to carry out when they actually will sit down, accept logistical help and funding from a Russian agent? They know this person is a Russian agent. It's very clear They've been told that also, right? I mean, because this contact started way before that. But here's the thing. The, they're going to do an investigation. Why don't you start investigating this? See, this, this, is a, this is where they have this gap, this huge gap. They're running to investigate only the things that sound like it makes their argument that boosts them up. That they're running only to do that. Anything that doesn't boost this narrative that they have about Western imperialists, the majority of them are actually social, <laughs> have been, even been known and called socialist countries by right wingers in the U.S. But here's the thing. They don't ignore. They don't investigate. They don't investigate. Oh my God! They don't investigate. They don't investigate. They don't investigate. They just don't want to investigate. And you could say it to them a million times, and I guarantee you, they will push it aside because it doesn't fit their actual narrative. Even if, you know, Russia called itself Imperial Russia. They don't investigate that. They themselves say they were colonizers. And, I mean, their own records show this. Do they even acknowledge South Africa apartheid? Do they acknowledge that? I mean, there's a lot of things they don't acknowledge, but l let's see here. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. I mean... I'm just really <sighs> being carried out at the moment. So uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, we haven't identified uh, a suspect yet, but. They haven't identified a suspect yet. Okay. See, they say a lot. They say a lot. They're going to get to the bottom of it. Uh, that's what we're working on. What date is this? This is July 4th. Okay. We are speculating, which I think is pretty good speculation about the motivation. Clearly, it was politically motivated, uh, very ideological. Are they politically motivated? Is Uhuru movement politically motivated? Is, the, is that Russian spy politically motivated that's been funding right-wing extremists in America? Are the right-wing extremists politically motivated? Hmm. Okay. Kind of attack. So uh, I just want to reiterate that the attack was actually interrupted. So we don't know uh, what the suspect was going to It was interrupted like your cooperation with the Russian spy by the FBI. <laughs>
this is ridiculous, you know? They, they're for that kind of, they're for this type of uh, interruption, but not the other way around, you know? They're not for that at all, you know? But they're for the interruption of colonialism when it comes to certain nations. They're, they're interested in the interruption of apartheid when it comes to certain nations. They're interested in slavery, the transatlantic slave trade, when it comes to certain nations, but never the one that the Russian spy comes from. I mean, you know, it's just... ...going to carry out after he burned the flag. Uh, when you got a flamethrower, you can go a lot of places with that. So. Right, because that flag, you know, we all have that flag, but the flag, you know, is that flag more important than all the lives that were destroyed by that Russian propaganda and disinformation campaign? Was it? I mean, can you tell me? Can you tell me? You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, with no further ado, I want to open up the, the press conference for questions. Uh, if y'all can just stand up right behind me and you can direct your question to the person you want to ask the question of. So I'm going to open it up. The kicker is coming. So up to the media and then uh, maybe the audience might want to have some questions as well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, the suspect entered through the south entrance parking lot. He parked in that space directly behind you. He got out. He sat in the car, as a matter of fact, for six or seven minutes before he got out, went to his trunk. He got the, the flamethrower out, put it on his back, and then went to the flag and started shooting the, the guy. Upon seeing that, uh, one of the neighbors, I want to identify him at the moment uh, because the investigation is still open, but he did attempt to block that exit. Uh, he thought better of it because he, he thought he might get hit. So he did come around, come through the west, try to get behind him. And by the time he got, I mean, he was tearing through the parking lot trying to get behind him. He took off and went east on 18th Avenue. So that, that's as much as we... All right, look, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to cut this off for a second and just go like this. Here we go. See, these are the people... Buffer out of noon, men. The, these are the people... Let me turn this down for a second. These are the people that... Um, <clears throat> that are talking about colonialism and talking about this attack. These are the people they're talking about. Globalization movement of Russia. With help from a translator, the FBI says he spread Russian propaganda. Western propaganda is lying uh, when they say that uh, Russia has invaded uh, Ukraine. This yeah. <laughs> and for some strange reason, they just don't believe it. <laughs> I mean, if if Putin said he was Jesus Christ or uh, or Muhammad or uh, you know Maat even, they would go right along with that. I mean, you know, it's just it just ain't gonna stop. This week, that man was indicted by a federal grand jury in Tampa with conspiring to use a number of U.S. citizens as agents of Russia. The facts and circumstances surrounding this indictment are some of the most egregious and blatant violations we've seen by the Russian government in order to destabilize and undermine trust in American democracy. The FBI alleges from December 2014 through March of this year, Alexander Ayanov was actively working to sow discord, spread Russian propaganda, and interfere with elections in the U.S. and around the world. The indictment... So you see what that says that date that means that means this is all going on 
before this attack happened, right? And you see how they're talking about this, right? You see how they're talking about it. Okay, let's get back. It's possible that the attacker would come and try to finish what they started. So, a discussion for public consumption at the moment, uh, but discussions are being held about what kind of response is going to be. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any response. All right, so look, let's get to the kicker. Da da! This is the guy. This is the extremist, the right wing extremist, right? This is this is him. This is him. Right? Oh my let me shut this crap down. Let's see here. What is this? Da 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 can you get this out of here? Sudden. Yep. This is him. A 19-year-old Tampa man has been arrested after police say he used a flamethrower to torch a Pan-African flag flying on a pole at the Uhuru House in St. Petersburg. Kenny J. Raymond was booked into the Pinellas County Jail Thursday afternoon before being released on bond, according to jail records. He is facing a misdemeanor charge of criminal mischief, and police say they also have started the process of seeking a risk protection order on him. No one was injured. No one was injured. No one was injured. The, oh, <laughs> no one was injured, but police say some palm trees near the flagpole also were set on fire. So the flag... The palm trees, they outweigh anything else that they see, any propaganda that, that Russians have put into play in the U.S. that has right-wing extremists out there killing black people. N nothing about that. The Uhuru House is the headquarters of the International Uhuru Movement Burning Spear Media Organization affiliated with the group release security video that shows a man existing in a white Honda sedan taking out a flamethrower and setting the flag ablaze, according to the Associated Press. So they already had the video of a man, but... Didn't the woman say they're not really sure about the identity or the, the... Let's just go back on this. I mean, let's go back. Let's go back. So they had a videotape the whole time. Let's see. So with no further ado, I want to introduce Director Akile Anai of the African People's Socialist Party. She's the Director of Agitation and Propaganda. <laughs> Agitation? And propaganda. <laughs> it, 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 it speaks true. It speaks true. Uhuru, as mentioned, my name is Akile Anai, and I'm the director of the Agitation and Propaganda for the African People's Socialist Party. We are having this press conference on today, July 4th, which represents what's characterized as Independence Day for the colonizer population, which formally established the U.S. as a separate settler colonialist state on stolen land of the indigenous people using the stolen enslaved labor of Africans brought here in chains. This point bears significance because- But Russia can do it. Because of the nature of the attack that our party came under on Saturday, July 2nd, where an unknown individual came into the parking lot of our Uhuru house and proceeded to burn our towering red, black, and green African national flag with a military grade flamethrower. Why not just the say basis a black man? of this attack is clear. The RBG flag is a clear response to the red, white, and blue that has come to represent the settler colony known as the United States of America. It's a you see, you see how slick that is? The red, black, and green, in her mind, rep doesn't represent who you're for. It doesn't represent unity among a people and a common history. It represents 
who you're against and who they want it to be against specifically is only Western nations. And the majority of those Western nations know a little bit about socialism more than she ever has researched or lived out. And the irony of it is, is that largely that form of sociali so socialism was created by the Marshall, it was helped funded by the Marshall Plan of the United States government. So it, it, it's really curious here. Response from African workers domestically colonized within U.S. borders that we constitute our own colonially dispersed African nation, which is in the process of cons consolidating itself, bringing about an existential threat to the U.S. and all other colonial powers of the world who benefit from the separation of African people to maintain the colonial mode of production. This social system, born of slavery and colonialism, birthed a capitalist economic configuration of the world. Why can't African people do that? I mean, why can't African people do this without colonizers? Why, why can't they do it without colonizers? What, what is there about having to work with colonizers and enslavers when they're Russian but nobody else. What what's up with that? I mean, it it just doesn't make sense because in in, in my form of Pan Africanism, I see Pan Africanism as a solution for African people, and it simply means with unity that solves all our problems with our own unity us harnessing our own resources and our own unity is a resource. To me, it doesn't have nothing to do with who it hating anybody going at pointing the finger at one colonizer and saying, no, oh, the other colonizer doesn't this. It doesn't matter. Or pointing the finger at nations that actually she's quoting the socialist half of these Western nations, they were, that's, that's where you hear about this socialism from. It's true. Defined as the colonial mode of production by Chairman Omalia Shetela, the leader. Why, why do you think people in Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, and other places, why do you think they go to school and get paid to go to school? Why do you think in these people, in this country, Everybody is guaranteed housing assistance. Why do you think uh, everybody in this in these countries get uh, get free health care? Why do you think that? And founder of the party and Uhuru movement. This mode of production is in a state of disrepair. The anyway, I want to get to the part where she talks describes starts describing who burnt the flag. Power of the U.S. is being challenged by Russia. China, and increasingly the anti-colonial struggles heating up throughout the so-called Americas, in Africa, and elsewhere. The time is up for the global reign of the U.S. empire, and it knows this. In fact, anyone ardently celebrating this colonial holiday is in a state of denial or sheer panic over the uncertainty of the future for U.S. imperialism. This fear, this roiling anxiety... You see this? I mean... Society among the colonizer population manifests itself in the type of white nationalist violence we witnessed in Buffalo, New York, with the killing of 10 black people in a supermarket. It's also the basis for the type of assault we've come under with the burning of our flag. And we're clear this was a targeted, ideologically informed attack. Our party, which was founded in 1972 by Chairman Amalia Shetela, is recognized as the political leadership of the black community with the explicit goal for black power and self-determination. Our mission is to seize power over our own lives and the means of production in our own interests. No one else has taken on this task in this city or elsewhere since the military defeat of the black power movement of the 1960s. No one in this city has managed to do what our party has, 
despite the countless attempts from the state to roadblock our work and discredit us in our own community. Our Uhuru House has been a longtime community center for meetings, events, office space for our organizers, and is home to our other economic development institutions such as the Uhuru Jiko Commercial Kitchen, Uhuru Pies, and within the last five years, Black Power 96 Radio. It is connected to a list of over 50 economic institutions produced by our movement throughout the world. Attacking this building has been a strategy of this system. In 1996, our building came under military assault from the St. Pete City government and its police. Following the murder of 18-year-old Tyron Lewis, they used every ounce of tear gas in this city, attempting to set this building on fire, attempting to assassinate our leaders by trapping them and members of our movement and members of this community while we conducted our regular community meeting. The community came out in droves and defeated the police, causing them to withdraw from the struggle. Our connection to this community was clear on Saturday when someone tried to prevent the arsonist from escaping the parking lot or when people learned of what occurred and came here to check on the well-being of the leadership. This building has the security of this community, which is what this individual or organization responsible for this attack did not anticipate. The police have told the media without notifying us that the person responsible is an African. That still remains unclear to us, uh, whether okay, or not this stop. means they've been able to put stop a name right and face together. Did you just hear what she said? She just said, here, let's, let's play this back now. See, see. The police have told the media without notifying us that the person responsible is an African. That still remains unclear to us. But we already heard that it's from their own video footage showing the man. They actually knew he was a black dude from the beginning. It, there were several people that saw the man that they talked to, their neighbors. Their, it, it, see, see, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Let's listen to her and then I'm gonna show you something else. Whether or not this means they've been able to put a name and face together, this, this would be anyone's assumption, but this is not the case. If so, they are withholding that information. They also stated they can't consider this case of ar consider this a case of arson and have reduced it to criminal mischief. This should show clearly the state's complicity in this assault. I want to state clearly that regardless of who is responsible, the nationality of who is responsible, the crisis of this social system. You see how she's being slick? You see, so she's, 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 she, they got, the, they had the video. They seen the, the color, the race. They know all of that. They had witnesses to confirm what they saw on the tape. The police told them who was on the tape. And yet, and yet, what did she just say? Who is responsible? The nationality of who is in this assault. I want to state clearly that regardless of who is responsible, the nationality of who is responsible, the crisis of this social system is felt by both the colonizer and colonized population. You see, they, they, they just, they purposely, that's not an accident that she discussed it that way. She, they just went around, but this is what they do. They go around everything. If you listen to the explanation about what happened with the FBI raiding them when people ask them questions, it, it, it never stops, but anyway, let me go back to this real quick, tell you about what this brother said. He's a brother, I don't care. You know, uh, I don't mean that I share his ideology, I don't. But um, let's read about it, because we just talked about socialism. We know she doesn't really, know, she's never even examined a socialist country before. She, I'm talking about the same countries the right wing people in the U.S. always point out as being socialists. The ones that have free health care. The ones that pay their uh, people to go to school. Um, the ones that give everyone guaranteed housing insurance and benefits in case they lose their job or they get a job with a lesser pay. Here we go. Let's, let's get to it. According to the arrest affidavit, Ray, Raymond said... He set the flag on fire because he doesn't like socialists and was upset about seeing the ugly flag every time he drove to or from work. Investigators say he also told them that he had hoped someone at Uhuru House would come out 
and shoot him because he did not want to live in a world with all this hate and division. Now, here's the thing. It is not easy being a 19-year-old. She's not a 19-year-old. Uh, the chairman of that organization is not a 19-year-old. I've already shown you that they should actually know American uh, history in, in terms of in respect to colonization. They should know the transatlantic slave trade history in respect to who participated in it, right? But here's the thing. It, it, let me let me just get finished reading this, and we get to the rest. D live in a world of division. See, he did not want to live in a world with world with all of the hate and division. Now, see, here's the thing. He's a 19 year old. He's been an adult one year. Right. Lord knows if he's even, um, you know, I mean, it's obvious these people will not teach him the truth about colonialism. So how do you expect him to understand? If you describe your struggle the way you describe it, you have to understand there are a lot of people, both black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, that might get confused simply because you are confusing. You are making yourself seem like uh, the same thing. But not only that, not only that, what you're accusing him of what you're accusing him of? What you're accusing him of? You motion arrays the have supported quickest way to make your, your content. You amazing. you have supported it. You have su you have collaborated, sat down with the same people, promoting it, funding it, giving logistical help, and they have a specific purpose. Now, how? I mean, how does that make sense? Anyway, let me get on to the next part. <clears throat> Nigerian man stabbed to death has ears cut off in Moscow. A Nigerian man was found stabbed to death in southern Moscow with his ears cut off in a grisly murder, investigators said Tuesday. The body of a 28-year-old man named Akintola Alufemi was found with numerous stab wounds and his ears cut off, lying close to the rail tracks, the investigative committee wrote in a statement published on its website. The man had been stabbed at least eight times. A spokeswoman for the committee, Victoria uh, Tsisplinkova, told the Interfax News Agency. Moscovy Komsomolet daily report that the victim was a student in northern city of Arkhangelsk, excuse me, um, to Russian people that might be watching this, I, 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 I'm not really versed in Russian names, but I'm trying my best. And they're not far off from other names, so excuse others also. And that the crime appeared not to have been, because my, my thing is not against just generally all Russians, because I know all Russians ain't the same, uh, but the government is doing this uh they're 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 funding people to to spread disinformation so acts like this happen in the u.s um here we go uh student in northern city appear okay and that the crime appeared not to have been a robbery and his papers and wallet were left at the scene attacks against foreigners of non-european appearance occur regularly in Russia, although the authorities say that the numbers have been dropping amid a crackdown on extremism. But here's the thing that you got to understand. Russia doesn't produce data the way the United States produces data on hate crimes they or, or, or racism or institutional racism. They don't produce that data. They don't even, oh my goodness, they can't tell you how many black people live in Russia. You see, and on top of that, in case you haven't been watching, 
who can say what the truth is anyway in Russia media because Russia don't want nobody knowing what's going on in Russia. You see? So this is just insane. It's just insane. Any case, um, folks, we're going to follow the development of this, right? An NGO that my, and this, this is not the only hate crime that happens. I mean, there's several ones. Uh, another, I believe a Nigerian man was thrown in an ice cold river in an attack one night. I mean, the list goes on, but here's the thing. NGOs are having difficult time being, even being allowed to come into Russia to even do surveys on these populations. So, the thing about it is, is that even though they're quoting the number of attacks or even though they say it's going down, you have to understand what capacity do they really have to collect that data? How do they collect that data? All of those questions, no one in the world has the right to know. You see, in Russia, it's not like, I mean, if you don't acknowledge Russian colonialism, if you don't as an African person, acknowledge Russians, uh, Russians um, uh, supported the apartheid in South Africa with, and, and, the, and with weapons. They supported the apartheid government killing Africans. Okay? If you don't recognize Russia was a part of the transatlantic slave trade, right? Then, and you let them get away with all of that. You let them get away with all of that with, with no question at all, right? You even go sit down with them when they're funding right-wing extreme messages to go out so people go out and kill black people. If you don't acknowledge all of that, what makes you think they're in a hurry to acknowledge anything about what the situation is with black people and racism in Russia? I mean, what makes you think that? If you don't hold them accountable, why would they? And you don't. See, you you put one colonizer in your who you, you know you you put you you don't even put Russia in the colonizer box. You don't put Russia in the slavery box. You don't put Russia in the anti-black racism box. When they clearly have been promoting funding and giving logistics to politicians, to uh, organizations, just all to come on. What is this? Half, half of Trump's uh, administration going in, went to jail for colluding with Russians. You, you didn't mention that one time. One time. All of these speeches that we heard. You didn't mention none of it. And what I'm here to say is, again, and more black people, more African people, but not only that, more all kinds of people that are tired of this stuff, that are tired of racism. And if you're white and you're tired of racism, you need to tell these people, shame on you. Get your shit together. Stop trying to warp history into one evil on earth when there's been a whole lot of evil to go around that has devastated people's lives. Okay? It doesn't help. You're, you're stigmatizing. And that's where, I mean, regardless of whether you, what this young man is doing, he's 19 years old. He's 19 years old. What the hell has he had a chance to know, but you're in an organization claiming to do research on this and research on that, and you, you you don't actually do your research, and you sit down with people that's funding people that don't like you, that don't like. Anyway, y'all, please go back and check part one and part two. This is part three. You will find some other information there that's that's connected to this. Um. Peace, y'all. Thanks for your uh, thanks for your time. Bless.